right, let's put some rail buttons on, finish this thing up. We're going to put some decals on it. Oh, what did I tell you? We're going to put a dab of CA glue in there. On each one. I use thick, sometimes called medium CA. Put a little dab in there. And then just snug these down. Like I said, they don't take a whole lot of stress, so plenty strong. Dab of glue. Oh, made a mess there. Nice and snug, and there's your real one. Okay, I'll give you two of these prismatic decals. And they're pretty thick. The wider one is designed to go to cover this whole stripe. But what happens is you've got to cut it off there afterwards because it's and it's so thick you have to slice it so that the tubes will come apart but it's really hard to slice because it's so thick so i put it right at the bottom right at the seam on the lower part of the booster Size, you just trim it down. Those will twinkle in the sun really nice and makes it makes it nice on recovery. Let's do the bottom one now. Same thing, start at the rail guide line, just go flush with the bottom of the airframe. Look. So there's your stripes. Prismatic reflective stripes. <clears throat> Next we're going to build the motor mount adapters so that you can fly a 29 millimeter or a 38 millimeter in this rocket that is equipped with a 54 millimeter mount. All right, so we're finishing up the airframe. I've gone ahead and screwed in the rail buttons. I put a drop of thick or medium CA in each hole and then just screwed them down snug. Don't have to go super tight, just snug. Not gonna be a lot of pressure on those. We'll go back and put our plastic rivets in after we've loaded our cam one and our altimeter and getting it ready for flight. So the things that we need to do now, I've also put the decals on by the way. So now we need to put in shock cords, parachutes, all the gear that we're going to need to fly this thing. So we've got our parachutes and our shock cords and our three quick links. There's a long shot cord and a short one. This is the shorter one, so this is going to be for our upper section. And then this is the long one, which is going to be hooked to the drogue parachute in the main section. That's where most of the forces are going to be on the initial deployment. Rocket's going to be traveling pretty fast. So we want the longest shot cord on the top, or on the drogue. I just like to fold it over and tie a knot in the end of the shot cord like so and that gives me a loop 
that will not pull out. Then you attach a quick link to it. Just remember again, this is the long shock cord. And then you reach down into your booster and attach this to the eye bolt in the booster. Okay. Now the opposite end, we're going to do the same thing. Try to get some of the twist out of this cord. Tie a loop in it and attach a quick link. There's my loop. And this will hook to the eye bolt in the bottom of the electronic section. Okay, I want my drogue chute to be closer to my booster section because I want it to be one of the last things that pulls out when the shock cord's coming out. It gives everything a chance to slow down a little bit and the forces are a little bit less on it if you do that. So what I do is I'm going to go just a couple of feet away from the end of the booster and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie another loop in it. And that's where I'll attach my drogue chute after I've got my heat shields on and everything. <clears throat> and you can attach it however you want. I use an additional quick link, which you can get at a hardware store. All right, so we got our main shock cord hooked up, a heat shield on a shock cord protector on it, which is this piece. And it's a fabric tube. It's a fabric tube made of Nomex. I got it. <laughs> and I like to have the quick link on there because it acts as a little weight, helps you get the shot cord protector on there. Now we'll be using mode rejection on our first flight as a backup and then we're going to fly a full dual deployment flight so that's what we're setting up for so that means I want the heat shield up towards the top end I want it I'm going to have an ejection charge here at the bottom of the electronic section so I want to protect this end of the shock cord I'm going to have a motor backup so for the other end you can either use another one of these shock cord protectors or you can use the blow in wadding, uh, blow-in insulation type wadding to protect your shock cord. That back up. So that piece of Nomex is going to protect your shock cord when the drogue ejection charge blows. That way it's not going to burn your shock cord. So for now, we're just going to stuff all that back up in here. Same thing, we take our shorter shot cord, tie a loop in one end. We're going to attach a quick link to it. And then attach that to the eye bolt. Some guys like to strengthen that up and drill holes and use quick links, and that's up to you. But this is going to come out a lot slower than the drogue chute because we're going to have it set to maybe 800 feet. It's going to be moving very slow already, and it's just going to gently deploy this main chute. Try to get some of the twist out of this cord here. So, on this end, we want the main chute to come out fairly rapidly. So, I want to put it a couple of feet away from the nose cone end. So, we're just going to tie the free end of this 
to the hook and the shot cord. Nice strong double knot. Don't have to make sound effects though. I want the main chute to be about two feet away from the, sh the nose cone. So I make a loop and then I will attach the parachute using a quick link because that way I can take it on and off in a hurry and change it out with other rockets that need to use that parachute. The other thing I'm going to want to do is take this back off. I don't, I don't really tighten these quick links either. I just do them finger tight because once you've flown them and they get black powder residue all over them, they're a little hard to open, so it's hard to get a wrench down in there. So I just do them finger tight. Take our remaining shock cord protector and we'll drop this through. So we want it on this end of the shock board. So here's your Nomex heat shields. And each one should have a little slot cut in the corner. If it doesn't, just take an X-Acto knife and cut a slot in it. Put your quick link and your shock cord through the hole. And what I like to do is stuff the shock cord protector through the hole. Kind of holds it in place. You get the knot and the nut. You get the knot and the quick link right up close to it so that none of that cord is exposed. Then reach in and connect that to your shock cord, to your eye bolt in your payload section. And then like I say, I just finger tighten. Nothing crazy or you'll you'll regret it later. And the parachutes that we include are top flight recovery. The 45 inch main and a 15 inch drogue. Is gather the strings, gather the shroud lines. Get them all separated, put a hand through each one. Once you find the center of the shock cord lines, I like to put a little piece of masking tape around the lines so that I have a quick reference to where the center of the chute is and a good place to hook up my quick link. So I've hooked my parachute at the center of the lines. I've hooked it to my quick link that I bought at Home Depot. So I'm going to hook the quick link to the loop I made in the upper shock cord earlier. We'll do the final packing when we fly the rocket. Everything's going to come out when we're getting ready for flight. Right now we're just setting it up. Same thing on this end. Same thing on the drogue chute shot cord. We're going to put the heat protector up at the top so that the ejection charge that we're going to put in there with our dual deploy doesn't burn the cord or the parachute. And like I say, if you're doing a motor ejection back up like we're going to, then you're going to want to put a heat shield at the bottom as well or some sort of protective wadding to protect the parachute. So I've got this long shot cord and closer to the booster, it's got a loop in it. 
for my drogue shoot and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use an additional quick link so that I can move my shoots between rockets quickly. And I'm going to show you with this small shoot what I did with the big one so you can really see the three individual shroud lines. You're going to put a hand through each one and then let it draw it together at the center trying to keep it as even as possible. And then I'll pull it together and I usually put a piece of tape around here. Just so that I always have a reference of where the center of the chute is. Roughly. Okay, remaining quick link. Strings to shoot on there, and then we hook it to the loop in our shot cord. The extra quick links are a little bit more weight to the rocket, but they also make it a lot easier. There's all kinds of connectors you can use. That's just the way I do it. So I'm going to stuff all this back in here. And then we're going to build our motor mount adapters. And then we're going to get this thing ready to go out and fly. I'm just tacking these together with thick CA. And then I'll go back with 12-minute uh, epoxy and hit both sides of these rings and make them really sturdy. Fortune too, in case they're all loose. Yep. So you want to put each of the end rings about a half inch away from the end and then the base ring fits on. That's what keeps it going through the main motor tube. And then of course the middle one you just kind of center it. Let that one sit there and cure. We'll work on the 29. I'll show you again. We're going to slide a ring on. And these fit pretty nice. You could, if they're too tight, you can lightly sand the inside of them. If they're too loose, you can fill the gap with epoxy. And you want to leave yourself about a half inch of motor tube so that you have something to tape to or good for motor retention. So there's an aft ring and a base ring. And I'm going to just CA these on here for now. And then like I say, I'll go back with the epoxy and really secure them. center one roughly in the center of the tube and your other end should be about a half inch away sometimes with longer motors you can fit the motor into the adapter and then you can put a ring of tape around the forward end of the motor adapter so that it can't kick back through when your ejection charge blows Gotta have a pretty long motor for that. So there we are. There's your forward ring, your center ring, aft ring, and base ring, which is the one that keeps it from traveling through the motor mount. Now we'll mix up some 12 minute epoxy and we'll put epoxy on both sides of all of these rings. We'll make sure that we don't get any on the outside of the ring so that it'll still fit into the motor tube. And this can be held in using the rocket's supplied motor retention. All right, it's time to prep this thing to fly. We've got all of our parachutes attached, rail buttons are on, decals are on, the rocket's finished. 
we're going to load a motor now, uh, pack some ejection charges, take it out to the field, and and go fly it. Here's our motor, which is an Aerotech I140 DMS motor, disposable motor. We don't have to worry about casings that way. We can just fly it, throw it away. We've already added our ejection charge, which is about three quarters of a gram. Works great on this size of rocket. You're not trying to blow the thing up. You're just trying to separate it. You don't need to blow it to the extent of the shot cord. You're just trying to separate the two halves and let the chute deploy. Anyway, we got about three quarters of a gram in there. Got our little cap plug in there. I never put that cap plug all the way down in there. I just kind of firmly tap it in there because um, I just feel like it fits really tight and I don't want it to not eject the parachute. That's not what we're going for. We've got our motor tube adapter, which is 54 to 38. And it just slides right in there. And then I've had really good luck just using masking tape to hold these motors in here. Keep it simple. And I'm just going to put a nice big chunk of masking tape around the bottom of this thing. And all you're trying to do is keep the motor from ejecting out of the rocket when the ejection charge blows. You'd rather have the other end come off with the parachute. So it's not as big a deal as a lot of people think. You're just trying to keep that motor in there for that one pop. And that should do it. Uh, I might even put maybe just another piece of tape on it because that's the way I roll. As I've said before, tape is cheap. This works good on reloadables or DMS motors just because the reloadables have a knurling, a knurling in the aft, aft closure and that masking tape sticks really good to it. Pretty good, I almost guarantee it. And then we slide that right inside the rocket. And then we're going to secure it with the motor retention hardware that comes with the rocket from SBR. It's a clip and a screw. And those just thread right in there. One on each side of the retainer, excuse me, of the adapter. And this is a little bit awkward, but I'm trying to show you how to do it. You can do this at the field. You can do it the night before in your shop. If you have a lot of rockets to fly at the field, then sometimes I'll do it the night before. One thing you never do though is just don't put an igniter in it until you're on the pad. Don't hand a rocket to the LCO or the RSO with an igniter in it. They don't like that. All right, so I've got the motor retainers on there, screwed down just snug. Again, all they've got to do is hold it against that one pop that's going to blow the parachute rather than blowing the motor out of the back of the rocket. So that's ready to go. Now we're going to get the igniter and I like to prep my igniter in advance and get the wires stripped off and separated. And I leave the cardboard tube on there just for fun. But on the side opposite of the rail guides, I like to tape it right to the side of the rocket and I use an extra long piece of tape because then when I get out to the pad I have a nice piece of tape to tape the igniter into the motor if it doesn't have a cap or something that holds it in I've got a piece of tape if it does have a cap make sure you drill a little air hole in it or just cut the corner off the cap and that way it'll get enough air to light the igniter something important to remember 
anyway uh, we're gonna go ahead and load ejection charges and we'll show you how to do that okay I'm gonna show you how to make omnidirectional ejection charges these are not cannons these are not charge wells whatever you want to call them you can get all that stuff you can go as fancy as you want to but I'm gonna show you a really simple way to do it that works every time and I've used it on small rockets and I've used it all the way up to 12 foot tall 12 inch diameter rockets same exact technique works every time and we don't want you to have any failures that's the key the more stuff you add to your rocket the more chance you have of stuff failing all right these are electric matches and you can get these from most motor dealers carry them and you can get them online just don't get the cheap Chinese ones they make some I believe they're yellow cheap Chinese ones I've seen those not go off many times and these particular brand the blue and white wire seem to work really good so you pull down the little red cap and it exposes the electric match head and that's what's going to set off our ejection charges and we're going to make two of them and you'll need a, a baggy plastic bag you just need the corner of it but I happen to have an old bag here and I'm going to cut it so that I can make two corner pieces for my two ejection charges and when you buy your motor it comes with this little vial that's really handy for measuring black powder so I always keep a few extra of these in my toolbox and then I can measure my black powder and I am going to put about three quarters of a gram in the vial to measure it that's a heavy one I'm using 4F black powder you can get it at gun shops, reloading places, ask around. My eyes are not good. Just got new glasses too. There's three quarters of a gram. And I'm going to pour that in the corner of the little baggie that I made earlier. I'm going to place that match head directly into the black powder keep a little red cap back there a bit and then I just bring the bag around and kind of twist it up and then I'll take some masking tape and I've gotten good at doing this with one hand over the years and we're just going to tie up the end of this bag with the tape I'm a breather. A nice push of a red cap right up against the tape. And then I'll take another piece of tape. Make sure you have a good roll of masking tape with you when you go to the field. You use plenty of it. And I just lightly wrap the entire charge with tape, like so. not real tight I just cover the plastic baggie so it looks just like that and that my friends is one omnidirectional charge and we'll show you how that goes in the rocket that's just essentially going to go right through the bulkhead we're going to wire it up to our altimeter trim the wire to whatever length we need and this is just going to lay inside the bulkhead and when that altimeter sets it off, it'll pressurize that compartment and out will come the parachute. It's that simple. Now we're going to make another one. We're going to make two of them for this particular flight. Pour it in the corner of the baggie. Take my other electric match. Alright, put the 
head of the match right in there. Give this a nice little twist. Do your one-handed masking tape thing. And there's my second omnidirectional ejection charge. Two of them ready to go on the rocket. Okay, getting the cam three ready. Excuse me, cam one. Cam three is for our three inch airframe. This is for the four inch. Got the altimeter mounted, the RRC3 mounted in there. This mount is designed so that it'll fit one mount right in the middle or you can put them side by side and you can fit two of them in there. And then it's got room for your nine volt battery on the bottom, which just straps in. And then I have wires running to the battery. And then I have one wire that is my switch wire that turns the altimeter on and off. And then on the reverse side, I've got a GoPro Hero 3 mounted in there. Um, mine fits pretty snug. You can put a piece of wire or something through the the hole there on the key and that'll keep it in there. So if we join the wires it should activate the altimeter. Which it did. Battery's good. We're going to keep those wires separated for now. And I'm actually going to just put a piece of tape over one of them now just to keep them from making contact while you're working. The RRC3 is a really safe little altimeter. It's easy to work with, but we're going to start working with live ejection charges so we don't want anything to happen, especially here in the workshop. Most of the time I do this out at the field. But still, you don't want anything to go poof when you're working on it. Okay. So there's the electronics bay section and the upper payload section. And I am going to go ahead and take the parachute and all the recovery gear out of here while I'm working on it. <clears throat> we'll start with an ejection charge in the upper payload section. So we want to untwist this wire and straighten it out as good as we can. We're definitely not going to need all of this wire, but we're going to just leave it all there while we're working on it. You drill the hole in that bulkhead plate earlier. And if you're really good, you can just feed this wire right through that hole. Pretty good, huh? Did it too. And then just pull the ejection charge right down against the bulkhead. I like to lay, lay the charge down just right under the eye bolt, kind of right in the middle of the bulkhead plate. And then I put one piece of masking tape right over the hole, usually, just to secure it to the bulkhead plate just so nothing's wiggling around. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but it ends up looking just like that. All right. And then we'll do the same thing with this other ejection charge. Straighten it out. And we'll feed it through the hole. I'm really hitting the holes today. <laughs> this one you're going to be able to see it a lot better. This is the same thing. We're going to put a piece of tape, like I say, right over the hole in the bulkhead plate. And that will serve to hold this ejection charge flat against the bulkhead plate. Just like that. 
and that one's you know pretty close to the sidewall we can move it over so it's just right underneath the eye bolt is usually where I like to put it okay this extra piece of wire I like to keep these around at least a couple of them in my toolbox because that's what I end up using for my power switch wires on my altimeter uh, you can again you can buy switches you can get magnetic switches you can get all kinds of switches screw switches um, I like to wire the two wires together tape them together stuff them back inside the rocket I've heard people say that oh I don't like the wires because you have to leave them taped to the side of your rocket uh -uh. you just shove them back in the hole leave just enough sticking out to grab after the flight and pull it back out and unhook it. We're going to keep it really simple. I'm, my goal here is to get you your level one or your level two as simply as possible. And we've done it this way literally hundreds of times. Now back in the old days we used to lose altimeters and things. They would go up just not work and come down and you'd have a flat rocket but these are RC3's I've been using them for four or five years now and I've never lost one never had a problem I think this is my original RRC3 that I've had for five years works great every time okay so I split the wires on that ejection charge and I've bared just about an eighth of an inch each one. You don't want to do too much because we're just going into the altimeter. We don't want any exposed bare wire to short out or anything. I know this is the forward end because it's marked. And this is up. So I'm going to pick one of these holes on the cam one that I can run these wires up through. And this is going to be the drogue ejection charge. So on the cam one, we're going to go to the drogue. And we're going to wire that sucker in. We're going to put it onto the terminal block, tighten down the screws. The RRC3 does not have an up or down orientation but I like to kind of mount it so that one end is specifically up so I can read all the text on it. It's just the way I roll. And you'll see that I have wired in the drogue to the two drogue channels, positive and negative. And those are nice and secure. And then I'm going to go back and do the same thing with the main ejection charge. Split the wires, bear about an eighth of an inch. These things strip really easy. I just do it with my fingernail. And I've got about an eighth of an inch of bare wire there. I'm going to go ahead and set my cam one down in here. And I'm going to wire in this upper ejection charge. And it's marked main on the altimeter. Now it doesn't matter which of these goes into plus or minus. Okay, now that you can see that the main is hooked up to the side of the RRC3 that says main. And that's all secured. You can pull the excess wire down into here. Okay, now as we assemble this, a couple things you want to watch for. You want to make sure that the lens hole lines up with the camera like it's supposed to. And then you're going to want to take your power wires and run them through a vent hole. I 
I've got my ejection charges wired in and I've got my power wire running up through a vent hole here next to the lens hole on the camera. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put the base of one rivet in there, just to hold it together for now while I'm working on it. So you can see my camera lens is right there. I've got a lens cloth, I'm going to give it one final cleaning on the pad. My power wire is using this vent hole. So we're going to go ahead and add our plastic rivets to these four lower holes. Now we're going to do final assembly with all the parachutes and the whole rocket, get it put together and ready to put on the pad and fly. I have an extra heat shield here that I've used on rockets before. And you can see that these get kind of charred after a while. They never burn through, they never burn up, they just get some brown marks on them. And like I said before, I'm going to use a motor backup ejection set at 14 seconds, the longest that it comes with, so that if nothing else happens, at least at 14 seconds, we know the drogue's going to come out and slow it down a little bit. You can see that the motor is down in there, loaded, ready to go. I'm going to add another shock cord protector and heat shield to the bottom because of that motor ejection. Now some guys like to wrap their parachutes in these heat shields like a burrito. And I think that's okay idea. I don't do it that way, but you could. And I know there's a lot of parachute experts out there. They're going to say, oh gee, that's not the way you fold a parachute. Well, you know, this is not my first rodeo. I folded quite a few parachutes. Now here's where I'm going to want my heat shield all the way to the end of this shock cord. square up this heat shield, center it right over the tube, and then just press it down in there as evenly as I can so that I know I'm covering that ejection charge of that motor. up all that because we've already got the heat shields on it. Same thing on this end. We're going to push the, the shock cord protector as far up as we can. Protect as much of the shock cord as we can. Right over that knot. And then same thing. I'll stuff this heat shield right over that omnidirectional charge that we've already packed in there. Just so it covers the whole interior of that coupler would be perfect. Now if you got a friend to help you, you can have them hold this end up. And then as far as packing the parachute, this drogue is going to come out and it's going to open. So I just fold it in half, just like a model rocket parachute if you've done a lot of those in the past. Roll it up, gather the shroud lines so that they can't slip over the side, and just pop it in there. Again, there's going to be 
50 guys with 50 different ideas on how you should pack your parachutes. That's how I do it. Shot cord. Set it all in there. Line up your rail guides. Put it all together. Okay. Now we're going to install the main chute. Same thing, we're going to hook up our quick link and we're going to push this shock cord protector all the way down over that after it's hooked up so it looks like that inside the rocket. Follow it with the heat shield and the parachute. And then I'm going to show you how to do shear pins, at least the, the way I do shear pins. Okay, finger tight. Heat shield right down, all the way down over the ejection charge. And then we'll start shoving some shock cord in here until we get to the parachute. You can coil that up real nice, but you don't have to. Okay, we've got our parachute all hooked up here with our quick link. Same thing as far as packing the chute. Fold it in half and half again until it's down to a nice pie shape. Roll it up pretty tight at the end, is what I like to do. Makes it kind of small. And a little looser as you get to the bottom. And then I gather the strings, the shroud lines. Roll them right around the middle like that so when it unrolls, it's going to work just fine. Stuff it in there. Put the nose cone on. And check your nose cone. That one's just a little bit loose. We'll probably add another shot of masking tape to it. Put the masking tape right over the rib of the nose cone. And that's much better. These plastic rivets Sometimes you can get one just to go in by pushing it in the hole and then snapping it down. That one worked pretty good. Most of the time you just take the plastic base off of the rivet, put it in the hole first, and then press the top of the rivet into that until you hear it snap. Then you know it's good to go. And we're using four of them on this particular rocket. Like I say, you could use six. But that's usually plenty sufficient to hold those pieces together. Alright, I'm going to show you a little trick. And this is the way I've always done it. It's always worked. All the way up to 12 foot tall, 12 inch diameter, 110 pound rockets. Shear pins don't need to be plastic bolts. That's too hard. You're going to have to use too much black powder to get them apart. Uh, I'm going to show you the way I do it. I take a 16th inch drill bit, and here's where I'm going to split. So I'm going to go right below that, and I'm going to drill a hole right through the coupler. And I'm going to take a round wooden toothpick, insert it into the hole as far as it will go, and then just snap it off. There's one shear pin. Now I'll do that on the other side. And that's all I'm going to use. Snap it off, give it a little twist, poke her down in there, and there. 
the ejection charge will blow that apart quite easily. Now that's the main section and what that does is it keeps it when the motor burns out there's a lot of drag on the rocket it really decelerates fast and that can cause this thing to slide out of here and then an early ejection and an ugly flight. So same thing could happen on the nose cone when it's falling with the under drogue and the nose cones hanging down there the nose cone could work its way out so we're going to do the same thing i'm going to drill a 16th inch hole right into the shoulder of the cone and you only have to drill these once once you drill them those holes will be there you'll be able to get them to line up and you can use them over and over put a toothpick in it snap it off give it a little twist roll it 180 degrees and do the same thing The other end of the toothpick in, snap it off. Give it a little twist. And there it is. And that nose cone is not going to fall out of there. Now the only thing you'll want to do is when you take the rocket up to the range safety officer for your inspection before you fly, you're going to want to let him know that you have shear pins in it. And not to pull too hard or he's going to break your shear pins. So just warn them, they'll understand and they'll work around it. Okay. This thing is ready to go on the pad. Uh, chutes are packed. Everything's plugged in. Altimeter's ready. We would arm the camera by Bluetooth. So usually when you put it in, you arm the Bluetooth. That's it. She's ready to go. We'll see you out the field and go fly this thing. All right, we're going to put her on the pad and get ready to fly it. Got the camera all armed. Some sloppage. Thank you. Front rail guy goes on. Okay, first thing we want to do is arm the altimeter first because that way if anything should happen here and the rocket lights, at least the altimeter is armed. And it'll have a chance to deploy a parachute. So I pull the tape off and I twist these wires together. This is why I brought extra tape on my igniter. And I'm going to put a little piece of it over this wire just to keep it from coming apart or shorting out or anything. There's our three beeps. That means the altimeter is armed and has continuity on both ejection charges. And we just stuff that wire back in there. So there's the igniter. Nice and straight. And we put it up into the motor all the way until it bottoms out. Right there. And I use some of this tape and just tape it off to the side here. <clears throat> and get my other end ready. Unplug the clips. And I like to clip low on it and then wrap the wire around each of the alligator clips so you get lots of contact. You just don't want the clips touching each other. These clips are fairly dirty. I 
think we're ready to go. Three, two, one.